Those who can, do. Those who can't, talk about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? Are you just one that sits on the sideline to talk about other people, or can you step up? Yeah, Mike Tannenbaum sees him as a first-rounder, and in typical Mikey T fashion, he has an out-of-the-box idea about who should draft the Washington quarterback. If you're the Dallas Cowboys and you really want to make things interesting, picking in the late 20s in the first round of this year's draft, what might you consider doing? Take Michael Penix, and here's why, Greeny. Last year, Deontay Banks with the 24th pick averages roughly $3.3 million. So if the four of us were running an FLT, we would all say that Dak Prescott is a better quarterback than Michael Penix today. But if one's making $55 million a year and one's making $3.3 Think about all the other players that just walked out the door, most notably someone like Tyron Smith that could be a Dallas Cowboy. Leave it to Mikey T to come yeah. up with something <laughs> to give us fuel on a Friday. Mina, Sam, and Jeremy with us. Let's start with you, Acho. Should the Cowboys, who have a lot of needs, uh, consider drafting a quarterback in the first round? I wouldn't be opposed if that quarterback is Michael Penix Jr. Why do I say that? Michael Penix Jr. over his first four years in college had back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back season-ending injuries. There's this injury history, but the last two years, he's been fully healthy, and not only that, he's led college football in passing yards both last year and the year before last. Mind you, plays in the same conference as Caleb Williams, right? So beat him head-to-head. -head. And so for me, if I'm Dallas and I have Dak Prescott on the last year of his contract, you draft a guy in the late 20s who could, if he was healthy, be a top three pick, all of a sudden you have a quarterback for now and potentially for the future. Let's say Dak plays outstanding. Michael Penix learns from him. Let's say you have an Aaron Rodgers situation with Jordan Love. I think it's, it's there are holes for the Cowboys, absolutely, but I'm not totally against the idea of drafting a quarterback if that quarterback's name is Michael Penix Jr. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't love this idea or the fit for Penix. Um, Sam mentioned Jordan Love. You know, Jordan Love was extremely young and raw coming into the NFL. Obviously, he sat not because of that, but because he was playing behind Aaron Rodgers, who's still playing at an extraordinarily high level. But Penix, I view as much more of a finished product, not just in terms of his age. He is an older prospect, but he's played a lot of football. To me, a, a better destination for him would be a team like, I don't know, Las Vegas, maybe not at 13, but at some point in the draft where he can come in and compete. Whereas with Dallas, I still view this as a playoff roster and maybe their approach to the offseason hasn't been as all in as uh, Jerry Jones mm -hmm. once said. But in the draft, you have an opportunity to augment an offensive line that really is the biggest area of need here with Tyron Smith and Tyler Biotish walking out the door. They might kick out, you know, have Tyler Smith, who's been very good play left tackle. But at 24, I think they're going to have some pre their, their pick of some pretty talented offensive linemen. And this is a team mm -hmm. that has been exceptionally good at drafting and developing at that position. Yeah, they also have Trey Lance sitting there in their quarterback room. That's we'll the see thing what that happens does it. There. So, Jeremy... This is all, of course, under the prism of Dak's contract situation go. there in Dallas. What do we know? What's the latest? Well, Hannah, I talked to somebody directly with the team who said that the notion that the Cowboys don't want to re-sign Dak Prescott after this year is false. They are going to try. Now, can they find common ground on the contract when Prescott has unprecedented leverage here? The 60-plus million dollar cap hit this year, dead money on the contract next year. It's going to be hard for them to do, but I do expect them to try. They still see Prescott as their long-term answer. They have Trey Lance as a developmental quarterback right now, but all offseason signals are that they're going to try to re-sign their big three at some point. Prescott, CeeDee Lamb, Micah Parsons. A lot of work to do there in Dallas. Let's. There you go. All right. Hello, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. It is Saturday night, and i um, about to spend some time with Mama. She's in taking a shower. I'm going to go take a shower myself. And we're going to sit down. We're going to watch some television. There's a, a show on Netflix called The Gentleman. Okay. The guy buys like a old or excuse me, is left a old dilapidated mansion that looks like it's run down. And it turns out there's like a weed growing place up underneath of it or something or other and, and things. So I, I don't, I guess this is Netflix and chilling. I'm going to be net flicking and chilling with my wife. Okay. So be that as it may. So that was the bad news for Dak Prescott haters that the Cowboys are looking to get Dak Prescott done. And the funny thing is we've got Mike Tannenbaum. Oh my God. It seems like 
every week, you know, Mike Tannenbaum comes out with another theory on Dak Prescott. Now, you know, I'm going to say I love Tyron Smith. Tyron Smith's been a warrior and everything else. But one thing about the Cowboys that they have done in the past is they've held on. <sighs> My Netflix and chilling might be passed out and slept, or slept or whatever, sleep, sleep, sleeping, passed out, sleeping. Um, one thing the Cowboys typically end up doing is they end up holding on sometimes to players too long. And they end up being broke down and not as efficient and expensive. I think the Cowboys actually got to that point and they looked and said, you know, it is time for us to move on and start over. Because we've only gotten seven and a half games on average with Tyron Smith. But that is the battle cry in the same way last year's battle cry was Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore, who was at the Sweet 16 with Nick Foles. Um, Kellen Moore and Dalton Schultz. Ooh. See, look at that. Just think of Kellen Moore and I just, oh, I just get sleepy. Oh, Kellen Moore. I am so glad we don't have Kellen Moore anymore. Good luck with that, Eagles. But be that as it may, that was the battle cry last year. Oh, my God, how could the Cowboys let go of Dalton Schultz? Dalton Schultz was becoming a security blanket for Dak Prescott and everything else, and they got nobody on the roster, and it turns out that Jake Ferguson was a lot better. You know, they kept talking about, oh, the Cowboys offense. You know, it was the young gun and Kellen Moore that kept that thing on life support and kept it together. They're going to, you know, rule the day that they let him go, that this is a big mistake. And here it was. Dak Prescott had an incredible year. Now, you could actually look at this and say, well, maybe they should have tried to figure out a way to work and keep Zeke Elliott there because they did miss his running ability. And you actually would want to have a little more than what Zeke has right now. But if he is part of a rotation, and it seems like the players on the Cowboys want Dak back, they want Zeke back. They want to get the band back together for one more ride and so on. So getting what you get from the Mike Tannenbaums, I'm sure next week it'll be something else. Uh, you know, this week it is um, Michael Penix. Uh, before it was, you know, uh, cut Dak and they could save uh, $31 million on this year's cap, even though it's just basically going to be still big dead hits and so on. So they'll come up with more um, conspiracy theories, I guess we could call them, on what the Cowboys are going to do with Dak Prescott. Whew. I'm actually tired today. I don't know why I'm so tired. I guess I'm tired. The Cowboys just take it out of you. All right, good people. I will talk to you at the Fireside Show.